Hey, what's good, everyone? Welcome back to the Outside the Box podcast. My name is Nick Ingvall. And on this podcast, as you know, I try to kind of expose some different areas, different uh, opportunities in the sneaker world. And today I've got someone who I just enjoy following and, and seeing her content. Um, Lucy, how's it going? Welcome to the show. Hi, welcome. I mean, welcome. Thank you for welcoming me. I'm I'm usually the one saying welcome, so have it. But thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Yeah, of course, of course. So, so I guess give like a, a quick rundown of, of who you are, what you do, and then we'll get into some questions and let people get to know you a little better. Yeah. So I am Mexican born, Los Angeles raised. I am from LA, I guess I always say that, but um, I am a content creator at heart. I have a passion for creating non-traditional content and telling stories that need to be told. Um, but yeah, I'm currently based out of LA, just looking for new opportunities and building with other brands. I think we probably connected through like your work at Aglet. You know, like I'm fascinated by what you and what Ryan and everyone there has done. Like, just like, I just think it's fascinating. I'm, I'm super kind of intrigued by everything that's like trying to take the real world and make it digital and then vice versa too, because to me, that's like kind of, it's like the natural place where like you and I, you know, kind of play in the same field, right? In terms of like creating content, you can't do one without the other, but but Aglet's kind of in a really unique space where like primarily it's like all in this, you know, gamified world. But one of the things that I, I you know, have always kind of just been intrigued about in your content creation is just like how you do have a very unique, I think, as someone who works with content creators and has for, you know, close to 20 years now, I I see people's eye for aesthetics, right? Like eye for, like just, it's easy to see that everything looks the same on the internet, but like there's certain people and I would say, this is what drew, drew me into your content and um, a lot of the stuff that I have seen you work on, just kind of like, it's just a different, a different perspective that I, I can't really explain it with words, but like when I scroll through and see like everyone trying to emulate someone else and then like, just like, there's like a level of confidence that you can see in content. And I think that's what drew me to your stuff. And like, you know, just hopefully looking forward to getting to know you today, talking with you and, you know, obviously looking to build in the future with, with you and, um, see how that, this all works out. But I guess like, let's let's start at the very basics for everyone like what got you into sneakers and how did you find interest in sneakers yeah so and thank you so much for saying all of those things first of all i am like on cloud nine right now um it's great to to you know you put so much work into your craft that sometimes the reassurance isn't reassurance isn't like there all the time so hearing people talk about my work this way is really reassuring and it makes me feel like, okay, I want to go out and shoot some more. Um, but I did, um, I did start really getting into sneakers. Um, I would say maybe around like middle school, I couldn't afford the nicest, most bestest sneakers. Like I was still wearing my fufu boot legs from the swap meet. Um, but I was rocking them with pride and I'm, I'm really, um, I'm really humbled by those beginnings and, I think it made me appreciate the value in sneakers and material things even more. Um, my first pair of sneakers were like some all white K-Swiss, you know, the classics, super. That's what I, I, I had to, to get because that's what my mom could afford. But I rocked them with pride and I will still remember those forever. I think they're called like icons now. Um, yep. Hopefully K-Swiss, if you're watching, give me that, you know, partnership. <laughs> let's go. Um, but yeah, that, that's really what got me into it. And then in college, I found a passion for photography. And so then I started working with a men's fashion blog. Um, so I started getting really into the men's fashion part of it. And I kind of put my own twist on it with like trying to focus on streetwear photography and like sneakers and fashion and lifestyle and just kind of like create my own thing from there. Um, and that was the start of like my passion for sneakers and photography and creativity, really. And it, I think they go hand in hand um, because I express myself through my sneakers. And I express myself through my fashion, but I also express myself through my work and what I capture. So that's how I got started. Yeah, it's, it's crazy because I think like, you know, 
being into the sneaker thing for such a long time and like hearing you talk about K Swiss, like it was such a big deal in California, yes. right? Like, like, like as a kid, like I think we, you know, we see all these brands and we see all this cool stuff and there's all this crazy hype now, but like having like an all white pair of K Swiss was like incredibly special like in California for a very long time that I don't think most people outside of California fully understand. It's, it was kind of like, like the air force one in a sense, you know, when, when you look at like New York and how everybody wanted a fresh pair. And like, I remember like, just like, you know, like it was like, I think it was like 70 or $80. And like, it wasn't quite my, my family was like, you know, $30 a year, never over that for, you know, until I started working and doing my own thing. But like when I, when I got a pair of K-Swiss, it was like, I, I had got like a pair of Nikes, but then the, the, it was like, you know, Nike basketball in the nineties. So it was like colorful and all that. And I would like repaint them because I wore them for everything. But the K-Swiss was like the first one that I remember, like, like actually getting like paint brushes to repaint the white. So it looked fresh. I mean, in yeah, hindsight, it probably looked out. terrible, but I, yeah, but like, we we're just like anything I could to like, make sure that it was back to like normal, but Oh my God, those were my like go-tos. And it, honestly, like even the bootleg, you know, like the Swami ones, I was still like rocking them and I was still taking care of them. But I think like, I've never been a person that, that like likes to spend on themselves. So that first pair, it was like, you know, birthday money. I was like, okay, I'm gonna <laughs> yep. get the ones I want. Like every time I was thinking about like my, I'm the oldest of four. So I have three younger brothers. So I was always like, what can I get them? Or like, how can I help my parents? But this time I was like, I'm gonna buy myself something for me. And that was like my first pair. And I felt so proud of it. And like, you yeah. think about it now, like we don't really see a lot of like case was coming back. I do hope they can make a comeback because I believe in all brands, um, but we'll see. We'll see what, what, what comes next. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's funny. Like I, I'm the oldest of four as well. I have two younger brothers and a younger sister and the same, same kind of thing, right? Like it, it's, it's one of those things. Like I just, I still to this day don't like, I mean, I'm old enough where I've just collected shit for years. So I have a bunch of things, but like, I still don't spend on me the way I would spend on my siblings. Like you yeah. know, or my nep- nieces and nephews now it's like, it's just a whole different thing, but so how, how how spending on others yeah of course yeah and and like that's kind of like the thing that i i am trying to do with like my content at this point right like i've been someone who's been behind the scenes for a really long time like i've done a lot of stuff that people know of but 90 percent of my work is behind someone that's you know right. more famous or whatever than than i ever wanted to be so i'm trying to find a, you know a balance in between like like, I don't want the fame, but I also want people to know all the cool people that I've met and like connect people. So it's it's interesting that you talked about, you know, kind of how that like photography and sneakers and like the creative output of, you know, of what kind of is what the drive is. Right. And I think that that's something that I wish that could be translated in an Instagram post. Right. Like that's the one thing that I think people just, you know, when people just don't understand like the the amount of work that goes into it and the amount of like, it sounds bad, but like the amount of like disappointment that is almost guaranteed because you can't, you can't get that out of likes. Right. Like, so there's like, there's gotta be another way of measuring that, but that'll, that'll be something we'll figure out down the road. Um, (laughs) We'll talk about it later. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, so how did, how did you, you know, kind of transition from, you know, you talked about the, the streetwear stuff and the, um, doing the work for the men's blog. How, how did that turn into kind of what you do now and like some of the stuff you've done in the, in the years in between? Yeah. So currently I am, we brought this up before a community manager for Aglet. Aglet is a startup gaming app. So Um, I transitioned into it because I was like, okay, it's sneakers. Let me see. Let me check it out. I checked out the app, really loved it. Um, And then prior to that, um, I had been working with different brands over the years and kind of same thing as what you just um, explained is like building up other brands and building up other people and doing a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. And so for a really long time, I was never really a face of anything. 
not that I'm the face of Aglet now, but as a community manager, I do get to do IG lives, Twitch, and kind of build that community. Um, but it's really funny how it started actually. So I got tagged in a tweet on Twitter and it was like Aglet's um, head of uh, growth at the time. He was looking for somebody to help with press. And I was like, well, I, and at the time I had just lost my job because of COVID and my husband had also lost his job. So I was like, I'm on unemployment. I have nothing to lose right now. Like, let's take on the opportunities, you know? And so I saw that that little posting was, was made and I got tagged in it and I reached out and I was like, I've never done press, but like, why not? Like, why not just put myself out there, shoot my shot. Let's see what happens. So I slid in those DMs and Lo and behold, um, a month in, uh, I started off as an intern and a month in, they were like, okay, no, like you're not an intern. You're actually our community manager and head of social. So I was like, all right, let me scoot on over there. Um, I think it was mostly because I had never really met Ryan or Owen, who was also behind um, Adlet. Yeah. And once I started talking to them and then they saw my background, they saw all the things that I had worked on, they were like, okay, yeah, let's you know focus on this. So now I lead all of their creative content and I am guiding their vision for what they want to see on socials and creatively. Um, and we're actually working on a creator series. It is just to highlight pretty much anyone who's doing good things out in the world, um, regardless of your field, regardless of, you know, what it is that you do. You can be a chef, you can be an architect, you can be Joe Schmo on the street. But as long as you have a passion, we want to highlight that. Um, and it really resonates with who I am. And I think that that's why. I'm so like drawn into Aglet because after I saw, you see the the basis, right? You see the app, you see that there's digital like sneakers and you can't really wrap your mind around like the whole digital thing. And now we have NFTs and there's all these things that are thrown into the mix. But behind it all, we're just people tasked with building the future of what sneakers and lifestyle and the digital space will be. We are moving in a direction where our life is not just, you know, out in the world. It's virtual. We're all online. So how do we build that online, offline? We, we live on life. Um, and that's the, the bigger um, brand that's behind Aglet. And so when you focus on the motives and you focus on the direction and not focusing on so much on like, you know, um, the likes and the the shares and the people and the verification and all of those things like that, none of that means anything. Like if you're not trying to build something for the future. So that's why I'm so attached to it and even more attached to it, not just because they give me a check. It's more about like the passion and the change that we're trying to build. And I'm trying to do the same thing on my own. That That's the reason why I founded my own creative agency, why I do you know, so much freelance work and why I work with the clients that I do because I'm trying to build something different. I'm trying to move in a direction where you don't need a blue check or 10K followers to get that reassurance that your work is good enough to be noticed. Um, so yeah, that's, I guess that hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's fascinating too because Aglet in itself is a really unique you know, place in this, right? Where like, you have to think about how, you know, how, how, tr how that translates, right? How okay. people like you're almost in an educational place just by being community manager, because most of the people that come through social don't know what's going on in the app, right? And that's a, an interesting kind of space to be in, because you have to think about almost like two different types of content, right? Because you're in on one hand, like you're never going to see the connection like with let's I'll, I'll throw this out as an example. But like if I worked, you know, I've worked at finish line before. Right. So like whatever we post on social media, like there's a direct correlation to people finding that on the website. Right. And it doesn't always work that way, you know, with with Aglet. But I think one thing that you guys collectively have done really well, and I think a lot of people can learn from the way you do this. You really, uh, even prior to like seeing that you were going to do this, you know, creator 
um, initiative, right? Like I just, I think that like you have, you've been able to find like, I think like the term influencer and like all the negativity that's associated with it is like, you know, or the blue checks and like half and have so many followers, all that stuff doesn't matter, right? Like when you meet somebody or in, come across someone that is doing something that you're interested in, it doesn't, none of that stuff really matters. And I think what, what, you know, thinking about, I can't remember the, the, the guy's name that does like the YouTube kind of like super deep dive. Analytic. Yeah. Yeah. King well, like, <laughs> but like those types of things are fascinating to me. Right. Because it's like, here's this like person that's just super passionate and it's impossible for me to not be excited about what he's doing because he's so excited about it. And, yeah. and I think that's kind of really fascinating about like kind of where I see how you're finding success, it seems like in, in like, even before this, you know, initiative that you're working on, where it's like, you know, just finding the people that are that are passionate about it with, within the community, even and, you know, and then tying that to discord and all these different places where people can connect even further. So how, how do you? How do you think about that? You know, like, what's something that you would that where you can? How do you keep that in mind, like, where there is no like, direct connection right you're not going to see you know those videos within the app but obviously they totally make sense and hit you know right accord with like your consumer base yeah well the one thing that i think that and then you you wouldn't know this if you're not like consistently following what aglet is doing but we are at the very beginning stages of what is going to be in a couple of years something much bigger than what we can, we can even fathom. Um, and I think that because we're at the very beginning stages, it allows to for us to be able to build an actual community where I don't care if I'm not getting the likes of all these other people, as long as we hit one person who believes in what we're doing and sees themselves as a part of this community and has a platform to either share their sneaker design, share what they're working on, share with us that they love the game, that they copped a new sneaker, that they learned about a sneaker or a brand that they never knew about. That's what we're building. We're building a platform where people don't just come and take. They come and they learn and they stay because they love it so much. So I think when you when you, when we talk about how to translate from app to socials, that's something we're still trying to figure out. And it, it's it's fun because we're so new that we get to try a bunch of different things and just figure out what works. Um, and that's the one thing that that I love um, about Ryan and Owen and the Aglet team is like our thing is like make it fun. So if we're not having fun, we're not working. Um, but yeah, it's just about trying to figure out different ways and developing the app so that it does reflect what we're doing on socials and so that our socials also reflect what we're doing in app in a different way. And but also using and utilizing socials to really bring that entire community together, because there's a lot of people who don't feel like they fit in. You may like sneakers, but you are also super nerding out about NFTs and you also love Bitcoin and you love the digital space and you want to learn about the metaverse, but there's no place for you, you know, like, yeah. where is that place? Where do we build that? Do we do, do we want to be a jock Slade or do we want to be a Virgil Abloh? Where do we find this hub, this platform where everybody can coexist and it doesn't matter? The lines are blurred completely because you don't have to be one thing. And I think that's in a whole nother like aspect of like why I love doing this and why it resonates with me so much because I've always said that I've I've tried to be out of the box as much as I can. I've never allowed anyone to put a label on me. I am a photographer. I'm a videographer. I will show up on your Twitch stream. I will model for you. I'll cook for you. Tell me what you want to do. I'm a hustler at heart. So you have to be able to build other people and inspire other people to be fully themselves. We're at a po at a point where I feel like the um, reassurance that people get from posting on Instagram or socials is like the end all be all. And it's not, you don't have to show, show up for anybody but yourself. As long as you are finding inspiration and you're inspiring and you're motivated to do the things that you want to do, you can try it all. Why not? You know, there's, 
what's what's there to lose if you if you take a chance on a passion that you have or you build off of something that you may have not thought of like i tried doing lashes it didn't work out for me but i tried it like i made some money i made my money back and i'm happy about it you know it's just about expanding on like the most basic thing which is creativity we want to encourage creativity that's all it is yeah do, do you find i so with so i am doing a million things so i have to like I, I like this podcast is basically like right now is just one on one conversations. I have a podcast with the sneaker history guys where it's like, hey, we have this discord community. We have, you know, a bunch of people on Instagram follow. But I find that um, our discord is like. It's like the safe space for people to just be super into whatever they're into, like we, you know, things that I would have never expected, you know, like I have friends that like, I grew up going to my grandparents' house during the summer because my dad would be working. Mm -hmm. And like, I would sit there and watch the golden girls like back to back to back every day. So we have like, uh, like I made some comment in a podcast, you know, long ago. And we like somebody joked that we should have a golden girls channel in the discord. Like, so we have all these like <laughs> really nuanced things, but it's funny because like what you're saying about like, you know, the Instagram likes, I find that we have like a, a just a massive group of people, you know, like or massive percentage of the people. I would say, you know, we're relatively small, but it's it's, you know, intentionally that way. Um, but like most of the people that are in our discord have almost completely stopped even using Instagram and like to see them kind of like step out of their comfort zone of like, you know, like you know, whether they have kids and they don't want to post the kids or whether they're just like, don't want to have to keep up on social media stuff. It's really fascinating to kind of hear you say that because I see it from a bunch of these people all the time where it's like, you know, guys are like sharing recipes with each other and like they only join because of sneakers, you know? So yeah. like, it's, it's really fascinating, but I was just curious if you see that same kind of it's almost like, I, and it doesn't have to be Discord, right? People use different platforms, but the community aspect of, sounds like you guys are doing the same thing where we're just almost creating this safe space for people to like be themselves and get to know each other, where like everywhere else they go, they kind of feel like they have to fit into certain things to, to yeah. you know, to play the game. Yeah, so. you definitely have seen a huge, and, and it's so funny that you say that because I literally just had a conversation about this earlier this week. Um, with the um, person who handles all of our discord. His name is Mike. And he's actually like 17 and in college. It's free. He's he lives in um, the Netherlands. And um, it's it's really cool to see that like some people are not in as involved on in social media as we think that they are because of the the thing that we are, are, are we're trying to fight is like the same thing all the time or the same thing that's being sold to you and thrown in your face all the time. You know, like how do we encourage people? Yes. To use these social platforms to advance in life, to build a career, but also be themselves like post what you like, post what you, what you want. If you don't want to post then don't post, but do you, you know, um, but yeah, it's 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 really funny that some people don't like to use Instagram, but they love being on Discord. Um, I love going into Discord. I pop in every once in a while. And I'm like, hey, and then the whole Discord's like, hey, like, <laughs> what's up? And I'm like, oh, I haven't been in here in a long time. They're like, we know. And I'm like, shit, like I have to make sure I'm on top of this. <laughs> but it's yep. great to have a little a mini community of like people that like know you and that you can share recipes with or share memes or like laugh about something I said on a live earlier, you know, yeah, it's yep. um, I love building that little community. And I say little, it's, it's pretty big. we got about like a thousand people in there, but it's still little for me um, yeah. because we have, we have such a tight, like within our team, we're so tight and we have about like 30 people working um, on our team as Aglet. Um, but then we also have like our entire little community team on Discord and on Instagram and on Twitch and they all come together and they're like super supportive. And it's it's so good to see like reoccurring faces in my lives and 
getting to know other people too, all over the world. It's crazy. That's the one thing that Aglet has done for me. It's like expanded my whole, besides the time zones, which are really fucking crazy. Sorry, am I allowed to curse yeah. on that? Yeah, of course, of course. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, besides the time zones, like I've really been able to connect with people all over the world. Like if I go to France, I got somebody. If I go to you know Japan, I know somebody. So it's been great. It's been great to like just meet people from all over the world and share their stories. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, that's that's the craziest part about like for me, like sneakers has kind of been that thing where it's just like I can't even imagine like, you know, if you would have told me all the people that I would meet, you know, when I was in high school or something, just been like, there's no way that's not even possible. Right. But yeah, it's it's pretty wild. So tell me tell me about or tell us about Tomorrow Isn't Promised. Yeah. So Tomorrow Isn't Promised is my creative agency. I founded it with my husband. It's Geza or Geza. Um, it is a creative agency focused on building non-traditional content. So we do consulting, we build actual content for different clients. Um, but it's something that we had been working on for about three years prior to the pandemic hitting. And it was supposed to be a an apparel brand. Um, which is the like smaller version of it, which is tip supply. Um, but then we were like, okay, we lost our jobs. What the hell do we do now? Let's go full forward. And that was like the kick in the butt that we needed to take things um, in house and to build ourselves at the same time as building other brands, because we said this before, but for so long, we had been behind the scenes building Adidas, building Nike, building, you know, for Reebok, like building for other brands that it was great. It's really amazing to have all of those in my back pocket um, because it shows for my work and the amount of work that I did over the years. But I needed to have something that was mine. And I think that now um, I feel more official. I feel more established and I feel like in the direction that I want to go, that's where I need to be. And this is just the start for me. But it's a it's a small team of two, three. Yeah, we have we're getting a third person. We're trying to get an intern. Um, she's amazing. She's great. She's officially my intern. I'll just say that. Um, <laughs> but it, it's just a people of color trying to create change in the world, uh, working with other black and brown owned businesses and trying to highlight, you know, who we are um as a whole as a community so how, how like what are some of the challenges you've dealt with in in the you know obviously the pandemic is one i can totally relate because same thing happened to me like i was kind of on the other side of that where i had started doing my own thing for a couple of years life was good and then all of a sudden like the pandemic hit and it was like every rug that was near me was immediately ripped out from under me and like thrown away and I was like okay how am I gonna figure this out but yeah um I I totally resonate with like you know just wanting to have your own thing though like that's like the you know it's it's I think it's a common storyline for all the creators that are out there where it's like you want the opportunities that come from working with the brands but at the same time like you don't want to just be like kind of stuck in this place of like doing the same shit all the time for them because right. ultimately like the brands tend to get really comfortable and say, okay, cool, do this again, do this again, do this again. And then it's like, well, then I'm not growing. And I know you're not growing if I'm not growing. Cause I'm the one creating this or, or doing this for you. But, um, how, how do you, how do you kind of work through that part of, you know, having your own business and, you know, growing from, from here on out? Yeah. So I think, um, well, it was, it was, it was definitely something that I wanted to have because I wanted it to be mine and I wanted to grow my own thing. Cause like, who doesn't like everyone wants to have their own brand, but, um, I think I wanted to make a difference. And that was my goal is to use every opportunity that I have in my path and every opportunity to shape that business or shape the vision of like what we were delivering. So, and I feel like that's what I'm meant to do. I'm meant to like make people feel uncomfortable about the things that they're doing wrong and I'm here for it. So I think that that's like, that was my goal with that. And I, 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 that's, that's completely what I want to focus on is just continuing to change the things that I want 
to change within the industry. Um, but some of the struggles are definitely learning all of the back end of it. Like I know how to create, I can be a creator, I can talk to people, I can do uh, an entire meeting consulting and asking the people for what they want because I've been doing it for so many years. But now how do I do my taxes? How do I do my all the back end work that I was never taught to do, you know, so it's definitely a learning process because I want to be a good owner. I want to be a good boss to like my future employees. So it's just about like making sure that I am soaking in everything that I can from every opportunity that I get so that I can then use it for my own business and for what I want to build. Um, I don't, I don't think that I have many other like struggles yet, um, except for maybe just, you know, figuring out what's next and figuring out like who I should be talking to. Should I be doing this? You know, there's a lot of like, um, things that you approach as you go in your journey of becoming an entrepreneur and then eventually a business owner. Um, but I feel like just having that mentality of like, I'll deal with whatever is coming when it comes and I'll be prepared for when it does come. Um, having that mentality is what's going to get you through it and what's going to push you to make sure that you come out of it winning and not come out of it, you know, losing. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Do, do you, are there any like resources that you, you know, for like, the person that's looking to kind of do this same, same kind of thing. Have, are there any resources or places you found like that you are going back to for information, you know, kind of navigating all this stuff as, as an entrepreneur and business owner? Yeah. So number one, I feel like LinkedIn is underutilized and I feel like people do not uh, like uh, update their websites or their, they update their profiles. And I think that LinkedIn is like the perfect place to network with corporate people, with people that are in positions to potentially give you an opportunity. Um, I think people don't share enough on there. So LinkedIn is definitely one of those places that I've continued to look back on. Um, for it's F-O-H-R. It is a creative like influencer platform agency. I try to go back and see what, like, what have they been working on in the past couple of months? What can I take from all of those projects? Who are they working with? What are those budgets looking like? Who has budgets, you know, so that you can know who to reach out to. Um, and it's really just like a bunch of research on the, on the back end actively. Um, and it's sometimes it's not even platforms or tools. Sometimes it's people. So people that you are constantly keeping up with, there's a lot of people that I, that I'm constantly keeping up with on social, on their YouTube, you know, actively engaging, actively networking. Um, but one thing I would say is it, not necessarily a tool, but just preparation. Preparation meets opportunity. And if you're not prepared when the opportunity presents itself, that's a missed opportunity. Um, so doing the things like updating your LinkedIn, doing the things like organizing your content calendar, learning how to organize, not just for, for freelance photographers, but for anyone in any field. It's just being prepared for the opportunities that you're praying for, for the opportunities that you're working for. Um, there's so many things before the actual opportunity happens that you have to like understand because I think people just think like, well, that person's getting this deal and that person's doing this and that person's doing that, but they only see what we show. They only see the final product. You don't see all of the late nights that I took editing. You don't see all of the calls that I had to do to get that product. You know, like you don't see any of that stuff, but it's there. And I think if you're, if you understand that concept and if you understand that you have to work twice as hard for everything you want, if you want to make it happen, then you will be successful. Yeah. I think that's incredible advice because it's, it's something that actually just came up in like the conversations, the sneaker combos thing that I did. And a lot of the specifically I'm thinking about like the shop owners that I talk to, right? Like, you know, you mentioned like tip supply and like, I think like there's like always this kind of underlying desire for people that get into sneakers and streetwear and like this whole like surrounding culture, right? Where it's like, you know, someday I'd like to do that, whether that's your own brand or your own store or whatever. Like, I think we all kind of like have that as like something that we're interested in. But one of the things that they also kind of to, to what you were saying, 
their advice to the streetwear, you know, the like up and coming, you know, first t-shirt streetwear brand approaching like a retailer to, to actually carry the product was exactly that, right? Like people are, you know, we get so excited because we created the product, you know, and it's, it's always, I'm always trying to put myself in like a much younger person's, you know, mindset because that's one, that's where the fire is and that's where people are excited and you, you know, pushing the change, but also like, that's where like, it's, you know, like, how can I help that 17 year old me stay out of trouble and actually go further with that first idea of creating a brand? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really interesting thing that to hear you say that too, because the others, it's like the completely different side of the world, right? People don't actually think about that when they're making a t-shirt or a hoodie, they're just excited to get that first production done and have it in hand which I'm not discounting, like it's amazing, right? Like we've all been there where we've had that first thing we've created and like, but then like that next step is also like straight backwards to be like, okay, everything has to be in line to start having these conversations. Wow. And I guess I never really thought of it from, you know, uh, you know, like even like myself, I feel like I should go, you know, freshen up my LinkedIn page because <laughs> I haven't updated in a while. I'm on there regularly, but I don't post a lot. Yeah. I'm. I'm usually just like one of those people that's like reading information and consuming things and then like, you know, reaching out to people and, you know, connecting with people too. But like, definitely not like the more I think about it, the more I'm like, damn, they definitely see some old shit on LinkedIn yeah. right now if they're looking at my page. So I mean, I, I'm saying all these things, but I have to apply them too, because <laughs> you forget, you just like get so wrapped up. But for the people that are starting out, that's a perfect place to go and meet others, connect with others on a, on a bigger scale. And, you know, like it's, it's, and I'll use a reference of like wanting to make it to the NBA, you know, you, you want to make it to the NBA, but are you shooting every day? Are you practicing every day? How many shots did you take? How many three pointers did you shoot? You know, like you have to actively work for it because when the opportunity comes and you're not ready for it, like you shot your shot for nothing, you know? Um, so I think that that's just like my biggest thing. And, and even back to what you were saying about the apparel brands, like you, you have to wear so many different hats. It's not just about the product you built. And as a person who came from almost nothing, I understand that nobody is going to hand me anything and nobody's going to say, here's 10 K go start your business. Nobody's going to do that for you. Nobody's going to teach you how to do these things. So it's up to you to actively learn them practice, make, remake, and do all of the things that a, like <laughs> Nike would do, obviously on a, on a much smaller scale. Yeah. Um, but you have to be all those things. You have to wear a lot of different hats. You have to be your own marketing person. You have to be your social media person. You have to be your, your product person, your everything, really. Yeah, definitely. So I guess like, kind of to that point, how do you, how do you keep balance in life when, when you're doing all those different things? Yeah. Well, I'm still trying to figure it out, but, <laughs> um, <Me> I, live, <laughs> I live off of my planner. Um, actually it's right here, this little thing. So I get the ones that don't have any dates because then you, you kind of just like use them and then you, you stop using them and then you have to buy a new one. So I, packed it and I buy the ones that don't have any dates and I just fill it in in case like I go a week without using it I don't have to like you know get rid of a whole page just to you know um, be on track so that's my little hack um I plan everything I plan what time I'm gonna eat what time I'm gonna take a break what time I'm gonna go to bed I plan it all so and that's just me like I think that's just inherently who I am I'm a Virgo is in me like it's just who I am. So um, it comes easy for me to be able to plan those things and like where I have to take, you know, two hours of this day to take this call and what um, what I have to do to keep some clients happy. And, you know, you have to organize yourself. Um, but if that's the level that you I'm trying to be on, if I'm trying to be at the level that I'm trying to reach, that's what I have to do to get there. So it's about balance. It's about learning. I think the one thing that I struggle with the most is saying no. Um, and I'm, I'm getting better at it. I'm, I'm saying no in a nice way. Um, but knowing when to say no, when you're taking on too much and knowing when to, and I, I feel like everybody says this, but 
knowing when to ask for help and knowing who to ask for help, um, because there's a lot of people in your corner that you could reach out to and ask for help whenever you're feeling, you know, drained, because it's draining. This shit is not easy. Like, I know it looks easy, but it's not handling and juggling so many different things at the same time. Like I have a full-time job and I'm an entrepreneur and I'm trying to build my brand and I'm trying to get clients and I'm trying to still freelance. Like what? How do I do it? It's, I don't know. It's just, it's just a process. You got to learn it. You have to immerse yourself completely into what you're trying to do. And, um, even if you are working a regular job at a retail store or you're working at a restaurant or you're a server, Anything that you're doing, put your all into it, but also know how to divide your time to the things that you're passionate about so you can build at the same time. It's possible. You just, you have to know how to do it. You know how to, you have to learn how to balance. There's a lot of sacrifice in the balance part, but it's worth it. You know, when you measure, you know, the sacrifices and the success, the success always looks so much better. So I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice a lot of things, um, not necessarily time for myself that always has to, you know, get scheduled in. I schedule in a 30 minute, you know, meditation se session. And then I also schedule in a yoga session right after all my calls so I can USA and not, you know, go, go off on anybody. Um, but you do have to take care of yourself and balances everything. So ha you've done a lot of freelance stuff and you mentioned it kind of just being a part of it's, I think it's common for people that just want to create to like pick up all sorts of things, right? It's like, you know, I'm, you know, 41 and I don't see myself ever not freelancing. And I don't see like, sometimes I'll have full time, a full time job. Sometimes I'll have, you know, way more than full time amount of work, yeah. but I'm always constantly looking for other things. But because like you kind of come from more of a, I guess like more of the photography side of this, what would, what would be, I guess, maybe some advice for like a freelancer when they're reaching out to people? Because I think that's super intimidating for a lot of creators, right? Like yeah. that part of it is not like the creating part comes naturally. The connecting and the, like the business side, kind of to your point about starting the business, like that stuff is stuff that, you know, we're not really taught at yeah. all it's like we got to just figure that out so what, would you have any advice for you know like the freelancers that are looking to like reach out and be a part of you know whatever brands they're looking to connect with yeah i would say show up in every way you can um and i think with covid being you know such a bummer uh we can't actually show up to events where we can network in person but leaving a dm following an account looking to see who is the person behind that account following them, engaging, um, making sure that you're at, not doing it just because you want the opportunity, but like you genuinely want to get to know the people and you want, you want to be a part of that. You want to be about a part of something bigger. So like, I would say, um, being strategic with your connections and with your networking and, you know, also putting yourself out there, the more work you put out, people will be gravitating towards your page already. Cause you're doing dope shit at first. It's going to take a lot of free work, a lot of free time. It's hard, but that's what you have to do to build. Um, you know, reach out to local people that could need a, um, a, a video for their restaurant. Go do a video for the restaurant. If you know that your friend needs headshots, tell your friends you'll do headshots. If they all pitch in for a, for a studio, go put your money together. Go get a studio, you know, like level up your content every day. Do not wake up thinking you're going to do the same basic shit you did yesterday. Think of new things, organize yourself, um, make sure you're presentable, make sure you're responding to emails, make sure you know email etiquette, you're on top of your things, everything will else will, will fall into place. Um, get a calendar, not just the job, not just the uh, planner, get an actual calendar. I have a calendar in here. I have two calendars in my living room and one on my fridge. And it's, they're all for different things. Like, but everything has an organization and everything has a place. Um, I, I always preach organization because that's the only way to do it. That's the only way you'll be able to expand and grow. Um, so yeah, like just reaching out to people, shooting with people, collaborating. And the more you post, the more you show your work, um, whether you're using 
Instagram as a, the platform that you choose to post or TikTok. Um, actively learn all of the things that you want to do and put your own twist on them and try it, try it. Don't just say like, oh, I wish I could do that because you can, you know, like we have so many ideas and I feel like I have this like long, I do this to myself too. I have this long list of ideas that I write down every single day and none of them have all, you know, come to life, but some, I try to get some of them out. Um, but just try it, put yourself out there and if you have good intentions and you are a good person and you're doing things for the right reasons, people will automatically come to you and respect the work that you do. And that's how you continue to level up. As you go, you have to be able to evolve. You have to be able to, you know, go from that free freelance photographer to that now paid freelance photographer. How do I, how do I build a contract? How do I, you know, always research, always ask questions. Don't always just take things for face value. Always look at the other way around. Um, be a solution person, be a, solu uh, a problem solver. So I just think like, you know, thinking ahead is always a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. And I'm terribly organized. Like I'm, I'm, I'm lists everywhere and like to do lists see. that have, have been You're like 30, on. 30 years in the making that I'm still working on. But, um, <laughs> you mentioned, you mentioned like going out and shooting, like, you know, a video for a local restaurant or something, right? Like, how, do you, th so one of the things that's really fascinating to me about kind of the way Instagram works is like, I, you know, I've been really lucky to like work in sneakers. Like it's like pinch myself situation my entire life life basically because i never had this stuff and like you know just never even thought that this was a possibility but one of the things that i've noticed in recent years is like i stopped posting about sneakers 100 percent of the time four or five years ago and like now it's like i don't care but i like notice that like if i post you know food or my dog or you know like sunsets or whatever like i get way less you know, engagement, that positive encouragement that is supposed to be positive, at least. Yeah. So how, how do you kind of look at that with like, you know, someone that's a freelancer, if they, let's, let's say specifically a photographer, right? If they're, you know, looking up to you and seeing like, oh, you're doing all these kind of like cool, like street style, you know, sneaker streetwear shots. But then if you don't, you know, like, it's almost like the, you see a lot of people have to be super focused in what they post. How do how would they incorporate that kind of either that vibe or like, you know, the, the other work that they're doing? Right. Because I think, again, like not to just continue to pick on like social media and Instagram, but like we're like funneling into like such narrow areas wow. as creators that I think like it's not surprising to me that like someone like yourself and like a lot of people that I know are like, let's just get out of this box and like, let's get more creative and remove ourselves from what this is because it seems to be just compounding on people. And I'm sure that like the freelancers that are going to watch this and like, think about how they get involved in different aspects are probably thinking like, well, if I don't do this, then it looks bad on, on me because of that. But I, I agree that I think like, you know, I personally think that, doing whatever outside of the, the comfort zone is, is only going to make you stronger. But how do you, how would you suggest they approach that even? Yeah. So I would, and I feel like that it shows on my page. Like I have built my page to be completely about me in a creative way. So whether that is, I am posting about food, I'm making sure that my food looks top notch. I'm making sure that like, I'm creating a whole video on how I created that food. You know, I'm just trying to take every single thing that I do and apply my twist onto it. And I think that that's what you have to do. Um, it, it does suck. And I, and I know that like, you know, you want to post, you know, all of your, the work that you're creating. And then there's the times when, like you said, you want to share a sun, a sunset or the food that you ate that day and the engagement goes down. If you are trying to build at the beginning, I would say build your niche, build for the people that you are trying to build for and the things that you're trying to put out and find different ways within that content to spread out a little bit of you onto it without it being so like, 
either I have to post this or I have to post that. You should be able to post anything you want. Um, but then eventually, as you start to grow, as your following starts to grow, as you have more eyes on your page, then you get to inject a little bit more about yourself, you know, show your face, show people who you are, show people what you do, um, put yourself in an uncomfortable situation, because those are the things that make you grow. Um, I would also suggest to get a website where you can showcase for freelance photographers specifically or videographers or bloggers, writers, you know, anything that can be seen visually online, get yourself a website, make sure that you build the website exactly how you want it to be because people share other people's websites. I've gotten clients through our website, like you people will find you. Um, it's just about making sure that you are spread like using everything, every resource around you to put yourself on. So if you're, if you know, if you're not going to do it, nobody else is going to do it. Like nobody else is going to just put you on their website. So um, invest in yourself, put in the work um, to diversify yourself and make sure that people are seeing you from different mediums, not just focused on Instagram, get on TikTok, get on YouTube, get on, you know, whatever other platform there is to be found, do it. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And it's definitely something that I think is, you know, going back to like putting yourself in an uncomfortable, you know, situations, right? Because ultimately that in itself can be uncomfortable. It's like learning how to put together a website. There's a lot of good pl places where you can get something together, but I think everybody's been down that path of like, okay, this is frustrating. Like, I'm just going to go back to the camera. Like for me, it's like, I'm just going to go back to writing and typing up stuff where, um, but I think it's super, super good advice. So um, almost out of time, but like, I'll, I'll throw this last question at you because, you know, I guess technically this is really still supposed to be connected to sneakers in some way or, yeah. or another, but like, what's one thing that you would change about sneakers right now and why? Um, well, the obvious um, that it's very male dominated and we need more women in there, but also, um, also being able to, include people of color, women, and the diversity that we see on these mood boards into actual people that are pushing these projects out from start to finish. Don't just bring me in as a model. Don't just bring me in as a backup. Be Let me be the photographer. Let me be the guide. Let me be the vision from start to finish. And I think that that comes full circle with why I, why Geza and I created Tomorrow is in Promise is to be able to be there from the start. Um, and, and also with Aglet too, like I want to be able to be there from the start so that I can make those changes that need to be made and keep people accountable and be that representation in the room for other people so that it starts to change. You know, like I know that when and if I do ever leave Aglet, all of the things that I implemented on diversity and on, you know, highlighting people of color and hiring people of color is going to continue, you know, is establishing um, people in positions where we can really make a change, you know, don't just don't just give me a check to come in, you know, or don't just hit me up to um, pick my brain, you know, actually make me involved in the entire process. So that's what I would change 100% um, besides the uh, other obvious of inclusive sizing, um, because we all know that we want if and, and also I think that also plays into it, because if we had women and people of color and women of color in these positions, we would have these opportunities to have more inclusive sizing. And we've seen that there's a whole community and a lot of women in the sneaker industry that are really pushing for this. But obviously, we still have a lot more work to do until we can get to that point, that point. But that's what I would change. Well, it's been awesome chatting with you. Um, you could tell Gaze, I'm, 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 I'm going to be sliding into his DM soon. So I want to I want to chat with him about what he's doing, too. Um, but uh, I guess last but not least, let's definitely reiterate kind of what you're working on with the creator thing, because like that was like the, the triggering moment of like, I definitely need to talk to her about this now. So. Um. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So if you are a creative in any space doing anything for your community and actively making a change, we want to be able to highlight you through 
uh, video concepts and content creation. Um, I'm trying to expand on what that is. I'm trying to expand on it, just not just being an interview. Um, we have a couple pilots coming out very soon, so stay tuned for that. Um, download the Aglet app, find out what it is, keep your eyes on it because it's gonna get better. Um, I know we're a little, you know, we're just a little, we just drop digital sneakers and I think that's what people think we do, but we do a lot more. Um, and if you want to be a part of it, feel free to reach out to me or on the Aglet app. I'm happy to, you know, take in any requests of, from people that want to be a part of this. Um, we're really looking to highlight multiple creators across the world. Um, I'm not sure how we're going to do that yet. Probably something like this um, over Zoom because I can't just travel everywhere. Um, although Ryan did mention that he wants to send me to Tokyo. So if you're watching this, Ryan, I hope you keep your promise. Okay? Because uh, I want to go to Tokyo. Uh, but anyway, so if you if you are a creator, a creative, and you want to be a part of this, there's a home for you and there's a platform for you to voice who you are and share your story. Cool, cool. And then I guess last but not least, let's make sure people can find you online too so they can connect with you directly. Yes. So my handle is Lucy Crivelli, L-U-C-Y. C-R-I-V-E-L-L-I. -L -L -I. It's actually on my little screen here. Um, but follow me, engage with me, message me. I respond to everybody and all. Um, and if you ever want any advice on anything that you should be doing, whether you're a freelancer or you want to get into marketing, community, whatever it is, I'm here. I am an open book and I will probably not know every answer to your question, but I will, I'll figure it out or I'll find somebody that knows the answer to your question. So Thank you so much for having me, Nick. Seriously. Yeah, of course. Of course. It was great chatting with you. I'm sure we'll be working together in the future on some stuff. But yeah, I definitely want to talk to Geza too. So just you can give him a forewarning that, that I, you know, I'm coming. So. All right. But, I'll let him know. All right. Thank you again. Thanks, everybody, for watching, tuning in, listening, wherever you're taking in this content. I appreciate you. And I will catch you next time. Peace. Cool, cool.